Logging, seemingly the pilot whale's favourite activity, wooing whale watchers with their chilled out approach to life, with an occasional spy hop, fluke slap, or if really lucky, a half-hearted attempt at breaching, jumping clear of the water. For almost 20 years, young people from around the world have volunteered as AWF research guides on the whale-watching boats of Tenerife. Each year, some one million European tourists are able to see nature at its very best, and the volunteers' roles are to raise awareness of global conservation threats and to research the many whales and dolphins that reside or pass through Canarian waters of which pilot whales are one of the main resident species. Pilot whales' top, dorsal fins, are often marked distinctively, and, like fingerprints, this enables the AWF researchers to take photographs of the fins and identify the animals as individuals. The AWF have been doing this for some two decades, and in the process, they have identified some 600 animals all of which have been named. By analysing their movements through recording GPS locations with each sighting and discerning associations through the photo identification process, it has been possible to build up a picture of family associations, social roles, personality characteristics, fascinating information to pass on to the tourists. The AWF estimates that there are in excess of a thousand short-finned pilot whales in these waters, although it is not always clear which are migrating through and which are resident. Pilot whales are mainly a migratory species, but in two places in the world where there is an abundance of their favourite food, giant squid in warm, deep waters, as in Hawaii and here off the southwest coast of Tenerife, there are resident populations. Pilot whale families, of which the AWF tracks 10, are matriarchal, although males of differing ages live within the family group. The families, including the matriarchs, will socialise with other families, but each will maintain its own territory within the overall community space. Our research would suggest that the bigger males will spend time perhaps a year or so, with differing family groups, and general research suggests that all males will mate outside of their own families. In the spring of 2010, the Canary Islands Environmental Authorities, Medio Ambiente, gave the AWF permission to further its work by taking cameras beneath the surface to observe and learn. They had two clear goals research and conservation, as well as adding invaluable insights into pilot whale behaviour, it was hoped to get film footage to further wow the tourists and so encourage them to go home determined to help protect our fragile nature. What the research film volunteers found filming in the summer of 2010 was utterly startling. Pilot whales beneath the waves documents this voyage of discovery. The marine world, deep warm waters of up to 3,000 metres in depth and teeming with squid and octopus, devoid of the sound of humans and their machines, is home to the pilot whale. Here a large male, arty, glides past. It is a peaceful and graceful world, with families coexisting with each other in a very formal and structured society, but with obvious great affection and caring. The family seems dominant. Respect for each other, parents, females, the young, is everywhere. Raising children is everything. Toothed whales, such as pilot whales, have greater brain-to-body size ratios than even the great apes, being only second in the animal kingdom to humans. They also carry their young in the womb for longer than even humans and will nurture them for up to 15 years after birth. What are they doing with this mental capacity? Why do their young need so much nurturing? One answer is childcare and learning, particularly through play, 
and another is developing the social cohesion required to maintain their complex, peaceful societies. A third factor is the need to master the elaborate communication methods available to them, from highly developed tactile senses, a process of mechanoreception which enables them to follow each other's body movements in complete synchronicity, to echolocation, through which they are able to locate prey hundreds of meters in the depths below, and then home in on it. Additionally, they have a complex vocabulary of whistles, which can themselves be emphasized through streaming bubbles alongside the sounds, as demonstrated here by another way, Alonzo. Eye contact is also very important as a means of communication, as is body contact, with rubbing displays quite common, particularly between mothers and their calves, young juveniles, and males and females in courtship rituals. The pilot whales are graceful, elegant, completely at home in their environment, and very confident. Within days, our research teams were accepted as curiosities, something to let the older juveniles amuse themselves with, although we, of course, had no idea what it was they were trying to communicate. The role of the female seems firmly anchored in nurturing the calves for up to 15 years and in maintaining family and social cohesion. India, seen here, has been followed for 20 years. She is a matriarch of a family group we monitor and in this interaction she was in the company of Ruhas, another matriarch. Clearly the family matriarchs get together to socialize. They can live for up to 20 years longer than males and, curiously, are the only other animals, other than humans, to experience the menopause. No one knows why this is so. The youngest calves, up to a year or so in age, were very sheltered and kept tight to their mother's side all the time, often with other adults flanking them for further protection, sometimes males. Other times, other females. Small groups with very small calves would keep a tight, almost military formation whenever something out of the ordinary was present. In this instance, a male adult takes the calf away, nudges it to the surface, and then assumes a vertical side scanning position. It is hard to imagine what the purpose of this activity was. As the calves get a little older, they become more curious, and the presence of dive teams would intrigue them, but they would only be allowed to peep from a distance. Clearly the time was coming to give them a little freedom. As with human societies, play is critically important, and much of the mother's time seems to be in developing the young calf's skills through supervised play activity. This play activity was evident everywhere, here with a plastic bag. If the young whale manages to get its head inside the bag and its blowhole is covered, it will suffocate and die. A gift to the natural world courtesy of mankind. This was obviously a gradual process, 
as slightly older calves would be seen with much more freedom around their mothers and within small groups of whales, even turning around to perhaps take a closer look, but never being allowed to stray more than a few metres. At about six to seven years of age, the calves are allowed freedom to explore more. They seem to want to play or learn from us, even teach us. We, of course, had no idea what they were trying to do. Invariably first, the adults would come and check us out. Then the juveniles would come, full of energy, brimming with the confidence that comes from a secure, safe and loving upbringing. The interaction always ending with a double click from a distant adult, to which the young calf's response was immediate and obedient. About the age of eight to nine, the young whales seem to get allowed a lot more freedom. Females out in pairs, socialising, and exploring their environment, much as young girls would do in human society. And males being passed over to the older hunting males to learn appropriate adult male skills. Male adults seem to have four main roles, and one can't help but think that in such complex societies, there must be some form of initiation process making the coming of age a cultural event within pilot whale societies. Protection. Adult males are strongly protected, and this is seen with mothers and their calves. In the company of females, gallantry hasn't died, at least in pilot whale communities, and with their families in general. On the whale watching boats, the big males will often position themselves between the boats and their families surveillance. Here, two bull males, one of which is Artie, are not just checking us out, but are both using a body language that clearly shows they are making a point. You are welcome here, but behave, okay? Seconds later, a younger juvenile is allowed to come play with us. Provision. A key adult male role is hunting in the deep depths for squid. Here, Artie, after a successful night's hunt, has provided food to his family group. They have just finished their meal. The sun has just risen and they are starting to relax. Fish are congregating to eat the leftovers of squid from the pilot whale table. A recent research paper described pilot whales as the cheaters of the deep for their hunting strategy. In the day they relax, log, as SeaQuest is doing here, but at night they feed on giant squid in the depths, hundreds, perhaps a thousand or more metres below. Their strategy is to use their echolocation, slow pulses to identify a potential squid in the depth. And then, once located, rapid pulses to lock onto the prey. They dive fast and deep like a cheetah. The energy expended is huge, and they can't afford to be unsuccessful, at least not too often. Research suggests they dive up to 1,100 metres at speeds similar to cheetahs, and with a similar 60% success rate. The food is taken back to family females and calves, and their success in hunting no doubt dictates their chances of procreation. Their bodies are covered in bites and scratches from these titanic struggles deep under the ocean. No wonder they spend so much of their daytime logging on the surface, recuperating in readiness for the next evening's hunt. And no wonder their attempts at breaching during the day are so half-hearted. Procreation is, not surprisingly, a key male role, although it doesn't seem to be a case of male domination. On the contrary, it seems to be an organised, even ritualised event. After feeding in the morning, there would always be many young couples, seemingly in their own space, hanging out together. The male would always position himself between us and the female. On one occasion, our cameras followed them into the depths, and when they thought they were far enough away, they turned, faced each other head to head, and seemingly kissed. Is this a courtship process? getting to know each other. We think pilot whale society is heavily ritualised. On one occasion we witnessed an extraordinary event. 
in which a big bull male was supervising five to six couples who were clearly getting to know each other. We could not tell whether the adult male was acting in a guidance, supervisory or control capacity. It was clearly some form of ritual though. It is also not possible to know whether the partnerships were arranged or spontaneous. We know the males will mate with females from other family groups. Do the matriarchs get together to arrange this, maybe allowing a certain amount of walking out so the individuals can get to know each other and then, once the choices have been made, pass responsibility to a particular male adult to supervise the next stage. Is this inconceivable given their brain capacity and huge investment in creating social order? At no point in our encounters did we pick up any sign of aggression from the whales or between them. The extraordinary mating ritual was observed as a group of whales passed us by. There were clearly at least five or six young couples with a big adult male supervising events. Initially and later on there appeared to be two adult females in attendance as well. As we followed the proceedings the whales decided to stop stand vertical, side scanning us, and the big male came through the pack to check us out. Presumably they decided we were not of interest and carried on with their ritual, continuing to travel in their couples, the big male always in attendance. Whilst travelling, the couples were clearly getting to know each other. They seemed to like to swim not in tandem, but in flowing movements against each other, like opposite wave effects, almost like a courtship dance. All the time the couples would be gently caressing each other with their pectoral fins. One couple seemed to get too intimate and the female seemingly let out an alarm accompanied by masses of bubbles to emphasize the point. Instantly all the couples went to her help and the big male darted in mouth clapping an aggressive behavior. The situation resolved they carried on their journey. It wasn't all easy going for the couples. In this scene, one male seems to be ousted by another, although there was no apparent aggression, on either side. The climax of the whole event was when the couples got into close union, swimming tenderly in close contact with each other, males clearly aroused and both seemingly frothing at the mouth presumably a sign of excitement. Then they swam away without consummating the relationship, at least at this point. It is difficult to conjecture the meaning of these images, but they do seem to suggest that pilot whales in their complex societies have evolved ritual behavior in their relations with each other. They have a complexity of communication methods, many of which are superior to human capacities and they seem to live in great harmony with each other and to be confident in their environment. Just how advanced are they? No longer are these whales named on an Excel spreadsheet. The animals have come alive as individuals with complex roles and characters, living within complex societies, and with strong indications of language, communication skills, culture, and even qualities such as tolerance and affection. We 
We are at a point in human development at which we have managed to bring the Earth to the edge of its sixth global extinction event, one in which we will lose 37% of all species over the next 40 years. Extinct, gone forever, unless we do something. Maybe the real value of the pilot whales of Tenerife is to make us all aware of just how amazing our nature is and how, as the Earth's highest life form, we have a duty, a sacred responsibility to do something to protect our nature before it's too late. Here, our divers are being belly scanned as the whale researches them. The whale can sense emotions as well as such as pregnancy in this way. There are some hundred new European citizens of the Canaries this year, identified by AWF volunteers. Come and visit them. Be inspired to do something to save our planet. For our children and for their children. We are sure the Pilot Whale Nation would approve of the sentiment.